Chandler Sexton. I am the CEO and publisher of Subscription Insider. Subscription Insider is a resource for subscription businesses to learn how to grow and operate their business more profitably. You can find us at subscriptioninsider.com. Today we're going to be talking about part two of our renewal series. In part one, we discussed how renewals and subscription businesses in general are a hot business model again and provide some stats for how your businesses uh, can compare to what others are doing, as well as covered some renewal tactics and a major issue that you needed to be prepared for. This session, we're going to be covering very specifically, how do you know what to focus on when it comes to renewals? What we're going to focus on is measuring retention effectiveness. So to understand your retention opportunities and trends, you need to have a simple way to track attrition patterns. And you also need a methodology which accommodates different billing periods and the fact that some customers pay for only part of a term and then cancel. So I'm going to introduce you today to several basic measurement concepts. And then I'm going to show you how to apply those metrics and manage your retention business more effectively. So as before I dive into a couple things, uh, I want you to really think about how you break up your business into meaningful pieces. Meaningful meaning groups that behave differently from one another. In an ideal world, you'll want your reporting system to be able to break out performance by channel, perhaps by offer or initial offer, if for example, you offer a free trial or a discount, and then also billing term. You might offer a monthly or an annual. And each of these variables separate your subscriber bases into groups with different retention characteristics that might have different leverage points that you'll need to understand. So make sure your system can track these different groups within your business. And you'll also need to create a shared language across your organization for what you mean by renewal rate. Specifically, what will be your standard time frame for this definition? Since almost all billing terms are 12 months or less and fiscal years are defined as 12 months, that's the most logical time frame to use. You'll also want to measure, measure retention on a year-by-year -year tenure basis. So retention from one year to the next, just not the cumulative retention. So as you can see, as you start getting into the details, retention can be very complicated. And the thing that makes it the most complicated are that many businesses measure it differently. So number one, I'm going to cover a, what I call a simple retention rate. This metric freezes a group of subs and follows their attrition over time. You measure how many people from that group is still standing. So some of them are paid members at the end of a certain period, and then you divide them by the numbers, number of people who started. So that's the simple retention rate. So if you started with four and you ended up with one, you had uh, a 25% measuring uh, retention rate. Now, <clears throat> when would you want to use this and why? The strengths of this very simple retention rate are in its simplicity and its readily available data. It's also important for budgeting and forecasting purposes because it tells you how many people are available to be renewed at the end of the year. But it doesn't truly reflect reflect retention rate in terms of the revenue associated with all those individual subscriptions. For example, people who might have canceled in mid-year or after their first quarterly billing period may not really be reflected well in a simple retention rate calculation. So to account for those, what you'll want to do is really think about an annual equivalent subscription concept. So when you want 
the strength of this measure is that it's the most accurate method of measuring retention because it represents and offers a cumulative offer over on a subscription volume, a subscriber volume, and revenue. And it's based on pooling all the months served and recalculating them in years. And each of the years counts as a whole subscriber. It's a more accurate way to account for the number of subscriber months served by one offer versus another, especially those with different billing periods. So when and why you would want to use this metric? Well, you would want to use this to aggregate offers into a single offer, a single number, for example, when comparing a 12-month to 3-month offer to a 12-month to 6-month to 3-month billing offer. Also, you'd need to explain revenue changes. It simplifies the numbers into a single aggregated metric. Then when you need to, you can drill down into a detailed rat hole <laughs> if you need that to really understand what the drivers are behind something changing. To use an analogy, it's sort of like counting eggs. Suppose you take an in inventory of your egg supply and you need to describe it in terms of the number of the full egg cartons you have, but some of the cartons are only partially full. So imagine that if you took all the eggs out of the cartons and put them into one pile and then placed 12 eggs into each carton, then you count the full cartons. As a formula, the annual equivalent renewal rate is calculated the total months served for all months in the period divided by the number of months in the period divided by the number of subs at the beginning of the period. So you can see this and that gets to your true retention rate. So now you're probably thinking, well, that's really great, but what can I do with this type of information? Well, what you want to be able to do is to take data and, and the information and start leveraging it so you can understand specific drivers within your subscription business. So what you'd want to do, and here's an example of, of a report that really talks about and, and notices a gap in retention based on month four. So we're, we're looking uh, at a cohort analysis of all the subscribers starting in month one and progressing through. And it's a significant change uh, that's occurring to multiple expiring groups at the same time. And generally, the causes for this are usually related to a single lifetime driven event for something, something which routinely occurs um, at the same time for each subscriber based on the number of months that they've been part of your service. This could include a billing error, an unsent subscription service email, email sent unintentionally. This is something that's happening across all your subscriber base that's happening at the same point in their subscription. So if you see this, you now need to go and review activity across all of your teams to understand what is driving this. And that's yoga, as we call retention yoga position number one, look for the gap. Retention position yoga number two is what we call the finger pattern. So again, cohort analysis looking at all your subscriber base starting with month number one and going through and what you're seeing is numerous start groups show a drop in the most recent months, producing a series of do downward lines that look like fingers. So there's a downward do drive. So month on the number two column, you'll see that uh, in May and two, it dropped to 80% compared to normally it's in the high 90s. And, and the third month, it dove to 70% versus low 90s, you can see how the most recent months there was a decline in retention. Usually this is related to a single calendar-based event, something which accidentally occurred or did not occur which affected all your subscribers simultaneously. This could include service outages, system problems, and emails sent to the entire file. So again, you need to review everything that was done by every group in your company to make sure you understand what happened. The good news is it's correctable <laughs> once you discover it. 
the third area of, of yoga, retention yogurt, I wanted to, to give you an example of is what we call the downward slide. The downward slide is a slow trend affecting a significant number of stock groups in comparison to historical averages. So if you look at this chart, the big blue thick line is the historical average. And then you look at the recent starts, everything is below that historical average. And there's clearly a change causing a significant number of subscribers to a trit. And often this begins as a subtle change and it becomes more pronounced over time. And usually this is a drop in perceived value of your product. If you're seeing this, you need to look at, at your product. Uh, perhaps there's market drivers that your product is not keeping up with. There's a number of, of perhaps strategic or product issues that you need to really be mindful of. What we suggest is that you call a number of your customers with a script and ask them what they like and don't like about your subscription service and why they think it's changed or if they've thought it's changed. And then do the same thing with the people who've canceled. And you will be surprised what you can learn. Just pick up the phone and ask and, and you'll be able to really understand. So I just covered what we call our basic retention yoga using some base, some, the retention um, <clears throat> um, metrics that are, provide a good overview of what's happening in your subscription business. I want to show you an example here of what we called detailed retention gymnastics. And without going into every single, <laughs> every single detail, the report enabled you, enables you to really track all the key drivers of your retention behavior of your subscribers. It can track both the subscribers themselves and the revenue, and you can customize it. Uh, and, and it's really, really powerful so you can understand what's going on. And as you can see, you can start with your growth starts. You can understand the canceled, requested, and cancel card rejects. That's very important. It amazes me how few businesses really understand churn by voluntary churn and involuntary churn, and then understand the net. So if you really bring this out and you put this in for your own business, you will have a really good understanding of the health of your business as well. Just giving you a chance to look at that for a second. And I'm going to end with our, our brief retention metric tutorial with a few bonus tips. When you are setting up your bank statements and renewal notices, even if they're automated renewals through your subscription billing platform or your gateway provider, make sure they're not ugly. Make sure you understand what your customers are seeing. It is amazing how many companies ignore bank statements and renewal notices. If you think about it, make sure it has the right company name. It's clearly legible. Make sure it has your product name. If you have space, depending on your, how you're sending out your renewal notices, make sure you're re-emphasizing the value proposition of why people bought your subscription in the first place. It's, it's a great marketing opportunity to re-engage. So those are quick and easy things you can do to support your retention efforts. And then make sure you are also leveraging analytics. Everybody's talking about analytics these days, and there's a reason for it. It's, it's the intelligence that you can use to drive your subscription business. Understand your active subscribers. Understand your inactive subscribers. Identify who those sleepers are. Figure out what you're going to do. Pick up the phone. Email them. Do something to get them engaged. 
understand who your most valuable financially are and, and reward them in some way. There's a lot of different things that you can do, and, and identifying your most valuable from your, the least valuable and your sleepers who are not engaging in your product, you'll be able to quickly enact different programs with your renewal marketing efforts to really make sure you maximize your renewal rates. Renewals are why subscriptions are such a great business model. It really takes a lot of work. Many companies ignore the whole art and science of renewal marketing and focus only on acquisitions. And that's a shame because renewals are where the profitability is and the growth engine is for a subscription business. So take care of your golden egg, focus on renewals, and you will have a profitable subscription business. So I'd like to thank you. This is Kathy Greenler Sexton. If you'd like to reach me, you can find me at subscriptioninsider.com. My Twitter is KG Sexton. My email is KG Sexton at subscriptioninsider.com. And my phone number is 617-401-7653. Thank you.